a as a someone who's working with people on growth, uh, I think I love the fact that a business really forces you to grow, right? And I would just say nowadays that business is different. You know, the hustle grind type thing, it used to work and sometimes still does. But um, a lot of time times what is working, at least with our clients, is connecting with people because of your vulnerability, because you are growing and sharing that with people and you're using your business as a vehicle for growth. So that would be my advice is uh, look a little bit past what you're serving people in to the opportunities that this business gives you to grow as, as a spiritual person, as um, you know, as, as a business owner. And um, we don't think about that, but that's a huge part of being a Hey everyone, this is Devin Miller here with another episode of The Inventive Journey. I'm your host, Devin Miller, the serial entrepreneur that's grown several startups in the seven and eight figure businesses, as well as a founder and CEO of Miller IP Law, where he helps startups and small businesses with their patents and trademarks. If you ever need help with yours, just go to strategymeeting.com, grab some time with us to chat, and we're always here to help. Now, today we've got another great guest on the podcast, uh, Kevin White. Um, Kevin uh, just, or started, out, started out his journey in college uh, studying uh, at a tech school and, uh, and as well as for IT, focusing on Microsoft, um, and then uh, graduated and did uh, consulting work for a number of years, worked uh, primarily in the automotive industry and then also in the, the building, uh, building data warehouses, um, and then worked uh, with automotive suppliers as well. Um, and then uh, let that job or, or let that uh, job or, or left that job, if I can uh, not get tongue tied. And I uh, got into the coaching as well as uh, healing and spiritual gifts. Um, so I was focused on that as well as uh, started a podcast for uh, those suffering from addiction as well. So uh, with that much as an introduction, welcome on the podcast, Kevin. Thank you. Thanks for the introduction, Devin. My Thanks for pleasure. having me. So excited to, to have you on the podcast and look forward to a, a great discussion. So, um, you know, I just took a, a much longer journey and condensed it in the, the 30 or the 45 uh, second version of it. Uh, but maybe uh, let's uh, rewind and unpack that a bit um, and tell us a, a little bit more about how your uh, journey got started uh, in college studying uh, at, at tech school and IT and focusing on uh, Microsoft. Yeah, well, I really... Um... I grew up in Iowa and I uh, I was accepted to Iowa University and was headed that direction. And I um, I got a scholarship from uh, my boss. Well, it wasn't from my boss, but he was on the Rotary Board and um, a teacher of mine and my boss um, invited me to a Rotary uh, event and they presented me with a scholarship. Now, the thing that changed my life in that meeting though, was I sat with the Dean of a local t- uh, technical college and um, he convinced me to, he, he told me about a new program that he had where um, you basically learn and get certified in the Microsoft certification suite at the time, which it's changed so many times since then. But, um, and then you, you know, go right into doing the work. And I already had a job in doing um, some IT stuff and doing drafting. So that that was appealing to me because I really liked the work side of it. Um, I didn't wasn't really looking forward to a lot of school. And so being able to keep my job, go to college, um, learn some skills I could apply right away was attractive to me. So um, that that's the route that I took at the beginning. And it sounds like it was a you know had some uh, great people in your life that or yes. gave you yes. some additional opportunities and, uh, and and worked out well. So now, so now you're coming out of college, and I think that uh, you started your journey uh, in a post college um, or kind of uh, going or doing consulting work within the automotive industry. Is that right? Well, that was a little bit later. So let me um, I'll I'll transition to that. I started in publishing, so magazine publishing. Um, that was my first job out of college. We made uh, the move to Wisconsin, got married, and um, that was, I was looking all over for jobs, and it was kind of like 2001, like right after the dot-com bubble, and there was a little bit of a blip in IT jobs at the time, and so I I was just happy to find anything. Um, 
It was very fortunate that I was in publishing though. Publishing is a very data heavy business. And so I just got a lot of opportunities to grow my skill set there. Um, and so that was, that was helpful when I went into consulting, I had a, a bigger base of different things the, around data and done some conversions, different things like that. And so that was, that was helpful. And then I met a guy that, um, owned a, a fairly decent size. Well, it was only 15 people at the time, but now it's maybe 200, um, it company. And I just got along with him really great. And, uh, yeah, I got a job there and, um, and continued on in the consulting world. Then my last job in in like consulting in um, was was actually in software. And what you're talking about, where I I worked as a software consultant, um, and I was building data warehouses for suppliers in automotive. So automotive is obviously a very huge in, industry. There's just tons of like if you go to Detroit. Um, miles and miles and miles of businesses are there to support automotive, right? To, to build thing, anything from a screw to a seat, to um, a wheel, right? Like everything you can think of um, that's in a car. So yeah, that was, that was a great experience working with, with some great people in, in finance um, at those companies and supporting them from a data perspective. Well, let me ask maybe just uh, kind of one uh, follow-up question to a bit of that. So, I mean, you started out and it sounds like putting words in your mouth, but definitely correct them uh, where they're wrong. Um, that, you know, you, a lot of what you started out in the consulting realm was, hey, out of necessity, graduated from school, certainly need a job to pay for life, yeah. pay back, you know, student loans and that. But, you know, consulting uh, provides an opportunity to, to make that income now. Sounds like you basically stayed on that track throughout your career. Was that when you got into consulting, you said, hey, I enjoy the flexibility or the freedom or the, you know, that type of thing. And it was, you know, from, from that perspective, you stayed in the consulting realm or was it more of, you know, kind of what, what drew you to or kept you on, on that track for, for a considerable part of, or part of your career, as opposed to taking, and I'll put in quotes, you know, the traditional route of, you know, just simply going in and uh, getting a job with someone else. Yeah. Um, so I think, well, so it wasn't that I was, I was obviously working for people a lot in consulting. So it's a little bit different. Um, like what we're going to talk about next when I started a business, that was, that was a, a big change for me, but um, the challenge was the reason why. And it was very, um, I have some motivations. Like if you do, I do a lot of personality profiles nowadays, disc and et cetera. And a lot of those, my results are um, I'm very knowledge driven. I'm very, uh, competitive, right? Um, mostly with myself. And so getting certifications growing, it gave me a lot of opportunities to do that and kind of ignore the problems that I was having uh, outside of work. So work was really like having a job was kind of an addiction for me. Um, like I didn't realize that until I left my job <laughs> last year. But um, uh, so then, then I hope that answers your question. That makes sense. Yeah, no, uh, it makes uh, makes perfect sense. And so, so now you'd uh, you were in the doing the consulting realm and uh, and going down that uh, path, or did that for a considerable amount of time. And then it, you know, it sounds like you kind of switched gears and decided, you know, changing course from what you've done for uh, quite a period of time of your career to getting more into coaching and uh, health and spiritual gifts and also starting a podcast for addiction and kind of what made you what kind of took you in that direction or, or you know or shifted your your focus there yeah um so back I, I can't let's see I think it was like 2014 2015 things started to uh I was an addict I was addicted to pornography and um 2014 2015 is kind of when I had some like huge challenges at work. And meanwhile, we were having our, um, our, let's see, it was our fifth kid. And, um, and my wife was pretty fed up with how I was ignoring her and the family. I mean, I was there, I was working at home, but yet I wasn't really present. And so um, that started us on a journey where I ended up uh, meeting a, a business coach that really um, became a great mentor for me and uh, taught me a lot about um, how I was operating from fear. And, uh, and he was Christian, so it just kind of fit 
into um, my world and he helped me see a lot of things. And, and then I met a, a, another man over, over a series of this that happened over like maybe two, three years um, that was also Christian and was doing, helping people with, um, you know, trauma in the past, uh, energy work, that kind of stuff. And so um, those two men got me started on a journey that then included many other people uh, to help me get over my addiction, to um, show me that there was another side of life besides just the knowledge and the job and all of that. And, um, and what I discovered in that process is that deeper than my desire for knowledge, deeper than my desire that, excuse me, desire for um, challenging myself for getting new certifications was my love of people. Um, and, and that was why really one of the big reasons that I was in the data field is um, it also got me, besides being a challenge, it also got me into great conversations, right? Great business conversations about, um, because you, you don't build a data warehouse without understanding the business. You don't um, build, you know, BI business intelligence solutions without understanding what they're doing. Like you have to have some of that knowledge at least um, so that you can deliver a report to them that is meaningful. And so uh, that's what I discovered. And then uh, last year, uh, let's see, it kind of was a process over a year or so where I became, I exited the company I was at as, as an employee, became a contractor, and then I worked for maybe nine months or so as a contractor, and then gave them a couple months notice and, and left, uh, I think it was May of last year. So, so then, then the really, the real journey started, the one that you started many, many years ago. <laughs> um which is, you know, creating, uh, having a company. So my, my wife, this is maybe where talking about my wife comes in. She ran several companies, um, totaling around 5 million in yeah. annual revenue. Maybe just, and you'll dive into that, but maybe just as a, to raise just a quick question. So when you were, so you gave the, you know, you were doing the contract work, you gave them notice saying, Hey, I'm going to be wrapping this up. I'm going to be doing my own thing. Now, with that in mind, did you say, hey, I have this direction or idea that I know where I'm going to be headed and what I'm going to be doing. And this is, you know, the business plan and this is how we're going to be able to support ourselves and make it go a bit. <laughs> or is it more of just, hey, I feel like I need to go in this direction or I want to go in this direction and I'll kind of figure it out as I go along or kind of how did you, you know, what was the what was the plan there? Or what was the intent as you were going along? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> and I'm glad you stopped me. Um, cause that's a big part of this, right? Um, I would say a little bit of both. Okay. I was very naive on what it was to start a business. Okay. Um, I had started doing some business planning in 2018. I, I definitely felt a call to be in coaching. Like in other words, God was involved and, and, um, that was part of me stepping away. It was just, it, was, it felt like it was time, even though I didn't fully know what the plan was going to be. Now, uh, I knew I wanted to be a coach. I didn't quite know um, what kind, if that makes sense, right? Like I thought that probably business coaching was a best fit just because that's what I had experienced. And working, it's interesting as a business coach, like to really make an impact, right? You you work with people, but you have you work in the business, which I actually kind of like, right? Because um, it's a safe place, especially for men to do work, right? It's like we can work on our on our jobs, right? Like the, the home life, that might be a little too sensitive <laughs> sometimes. So, um, but I mean, the big problem was that I left my job and I, I really felt like my sister and my wife who had already started this business, um, uh, we're in a place where we would figure it out. And, um, and like, I would just fit in right away and I'd start having clients right away and all this stuff. Uh, that's where I was naive. Um, so I'll let you continue from there. <laughs> sounds like, uh, or it sounds like it was a good path to take it on. So now 
So you're going down that route and you're saying, okay, I'm going to go out. I know I want to do coaching. I, I know I want to address some of these areas. Maybe I don't know. You know, I think every, every entrepreneur to a degree has a degree of naive, naiveness. And if you didn't yeah. you ever get into, uh, <laughs> yes. you know, never get into doing a, a, a startup or a small business because there are just so many hurdles and things that you're not aware of when you get started, but nonetheless, you go into that. So now, you jump in, you get started. Now, how did you know? How did you figure things out? Where did it go? Did it take off? And you were able to find a lot of people to mentor and to assist and to coach, or was it one where it was a slow uptick? Or you're still figuring things out, or it's on the verge of bankruptcy, or you're getting ready to retire, <laughs> or any or all of the above? But walk us through a little bit as you got going on it. Uh, how that how that progressed uh, up till today? Oh, really? So that what when I left my job. What I really found out is I, I was I had a ton of anxiety not having a job, so I thought I could just get going right away and help people. And I think this is this is interesting in coaching, right? Like, there's a lot of lot of I've learned a ton about the coaching industry since we started this uh, business a couple years ago, meaning my wife starting before me. Um, and so, what we were going to do was. I was going to have a business and she was going to have a business and they were going to be separate. And, um, and part of that was we didn't know if we could work together. <laughs> um, and so what well, I left my job, had all this anxiety and really needed a lot of help um, to like uncover decades of stuff, which I didn't think was going to happen. And that's where the healing stuff started to come in. I, I went, worked with all these different uh, Christian people that, that helped me work through the stuff I wasn't dealing with for decades. Um, and part of it was just like believing that I could have a business um, and uh, a lot of other things. I won't go into all those details, but so in that process, I found a lot of my spiritual gifts and started to see that there was ways that God wanted to use me that weren't what I thought. And, um, and the end of that was, we built one business, which was going to be a bunch of coaches, mm. found out that that was not the, the long-term plan. And then Jamie and I, around uh, May or June of this year, kind of relaunched with the same business name and stuff, but it's us together. And so we're both, as executive coaches, um, turns out we, we actually like to work together it's working really well and that I don't like to do the things that she likes to do. Um, she brings a lot of business focus to people that I don't necessarily have the acumen in. Like she's run companies. I haven't. And so I work on the personal side of it. I work on helping them through things that are keeping them stuck. Um, you know, working with family businesses where sometimes there is addiction, there is other things in there in, in the whole pot of things. Right. And, so we're dealing with all of that together. So um, we're kind of in the middle of what you're asking. Like we haven't definitely figured it out. We're not like um, we're certainly not retiring. <laughs> um, no, we we did have in the past. We had some rentals. We had a bunch of things. We've burned through a lot of that uh, that kitty, so to speak. Um, but at the same time, we have a piece with where we are, and we know where we're headed. Finally, right? Like, um, and there's a lot of quality leads coming in and and it, it it feels good for the first time and here in the last couple of months awesome well it uh, sounds like you know i don't know that any business owner until you're basically getting ready to retire it probably hasn't yeah. figured out even at that point you probably don't have it figured yeah. out um but you know it's one of those where you're iteratively going through the process figuring more things out as you go along and uh, you know having hopefully having a fun time along or along with it and that's you know interesting i think that when you get into working with a, a spouse, you either find that you guys work well together and you enjoy it, or you find that, hey, you love each other, but business and, uh, you know, personal relationships just don't mix and you keep those things separate and mm -hmm. usually you get put or, or pushed in one direction or the other. So glad that it it uh, worked out well for you guys to, to go in the direction where you work well together. So, so now... <laughs> as you're figuring now as you've kind of got uh, more of that figured out continue to figure things out and continue to evolve if you're to look now in the next you know six to 12 months um you know where do you see things headed kind of what's the, the next uh steps for you guys um so we've 
we've developed more our entry level um, products. So like, um, so I'll just mention one of them is the working genius. Um, Patrick Lencioni is a great um, coach and consultant. And he um, he's developed this concept called the working genius, which the thing we like about the working genius out of all like tools that help you grow is it's super simple. It's really easy to fill out and teams get a lot out of it. They learn more about each other. It, it's a practical in that it applies direct to the work right away. So um, she just got certified this month actually on that. And so we're rolling that out. And it, it's just one of those like funnel type things where if you can get in with this type of a concept, help them get started, then there's opportunity to do more. Um, so we like a couple of those products, you know, to help us um, instead of working through your network, through your friends, that kind of stuff, it gives you a little bit more reach um, to, to go out and to find other companies. So no. yeah, the next six months, I think that's going to be our focus is like expanding that impact. And it's kind of a hot, hot um, subject right now because it's relatively new in the last couple of years. So um, yeah. So leverage that a little bit and, and get some excitement around that. And the mean, meanwhile, um, the way things kind of set up for us in the business is my wife does a lot of networking and I do a lot of um, actual coaching. Right. So she's, she's more like talking to people once a month and um, I'm talking to them weekly. Um, so a lot of the work comes to me, but she's developing a lot of it. And she's also one meeting with her a month gives people a lot to work on. <laughs> she's highly driven. So um, anyway, that's, Awesome. Building that out more is probably is most of our focus. Well, sounds like uh, definitely a, a great uh, direction to head in and uh, lots of uh, opportunity and things that yet to come. So definitely will be uh, fun to see how things evolve. Well, now as uh, we do wrap up towards the end of uh, this episode, um, I always like to wrap up the each episode with the same two questions. So we'll go ahead and uh, jump to those uh, now. Um, so okay. the first question I'd like to ask is along your journey, what was the worst business decision you ever made? What did you learn from it? So, um, I mean, I, I think the biggest thing, it hasn't been a long journey, but the biggest thing that I would tell, it's maybe, it might be putting these two questions that you, you, you put at the end together. And I apologize if that's what I'm doing. And I'm, I'm I don't mean to do that, but. It's okay. I'll still the, ask you the same question. Uh, okay. Question All right, anyway, good. so you'll get an opportunity to answer that nonetheless, but go ahead. Yeah. Um, so I think the worst decision was really on just my part alone was to just jump in and have confidence in other people that they could somehow help me start a business. I get it. Other people can help you start a business, but yet at the same time, like it was on me. Right. And, um, if I could, if I could undo that one thing, I would just, go in with a little more eyes wide open, like, okay, you're really getting into this, Kevin, you can't depend on other people to actually magically create a business for you. You, you need to do this. Uh, I think that's really the worst decision I made is to leave my job thinking that I could just, because I had worked with people for a long time, that it would be relatively easy. And that was not true at all. Um, no, I think that's uh, definitely makes sense as a, Good, uh, good takeaway and a good thing to, or a good mistake to learn from as you get going. So now I will ask the, the second uh, question, which you kind of touched on, but I'll ask you nonetheless and give you an opportunity to maybe give another piece of advice. But the second question <laughs> I'd like to wrap up with is so um, if now, if you're talking to somebody that's uh, just getting into a startup or a small business, what would be the one piece of advice you give them? Yeah, I really, I mean, as a, as a, someone who's working with people on growth, uh, I think I love the fact that a business really forces you to grow, right? And I would just say nowadays that business is different. You know, the hustle grind type thing, it used to work and sometimes still does. But um, a lot of time times what is working, at least with our clients, is connecting with people because of your vulnerability, because you are growing and sharing that with people. And you're using your business as a vehicle for growth. So that would be my advice is uh, look a little bit past what you're serving people in 
to the opportunities that this business gives you to grow as as a spiritual person, as um, you know, as as a business owner. And um, we don't think about that, but that's a huge part of being a business owner. It's like continual force growth, <laughs> which um, is is good and bad, but overall, I think it's good. Awesome. Well, I definitely think that's a great piece of advice and a, a great uh, takeaway. So, well, with that, now as we uh, do wrap up this episode, if people want to reach out to you, they want to be a customer, they want to be a client, they want to be an employee, they want to be an investor, they want to be your next best friend, any or all of the above, what's the best way to reach out to you, contact you, find out more? Well, I'm on LinkedIn um, at uh, Business Addicts Podcast, uh, Kevin White. Um, I think you can find me, Kevin G. White is my profile name. Maybe we can put some of that in in the actual um, show notes, maybe. I don't know. Um, but also, beliefcrew.com is is our, our website. So, Believe Crew, as in believing in people, believecrew.com. Awesome. Well, I Thank definitely you. encourage uh, people to reach out, make a new connection, and uh, if nothing else, uh, make a new best friend. So uh, with that, thank you again, Kevin, for coming on the podcast. It's been a fun. It's been a pleasure. Now, for all of you the listeners that are out there, if you have your own journey to share and you'd like to be a, a guest on the podcast, we'd love to have you. So just go to inventiveguest.com, apply to be on the show, a couple more things as listeners. Make sure to click share, subscribe, leave us a review. Helps us to reach even more startups and small businesses to help them along their journey to success. And on that note, if along your journey you ever need help with patents or trademarks or anything else for your startup or your small business, just go to strategymeeting.com, grab some time with us to chat, and we're always here to help. Well, thank you again, Kevin, for uh, coming on the podcast and wish the next leg of your journey even better than the last. Thank you. Thanks, thanks for having me.